Hello and Assalamu Alaikum everyone. Welcome to the Advanced Audit and Assurance Orientation for exams in September 23 and December 23. And this is an orientation for the Advanced Audit and Assurance International Stream. And I am your tutor, Kashif Kamran. Now, just before starting on with the AAA orientation, I would like to share my tutor profile with all of you. In terms of my tutor profile, I am a fellow chartered certified accountant. I have a certificate in international auditing and I am a CA finalist from the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Pakistan. In terms of my experience, uh, it's been over 15 years since I am teaching the ACCA qualification and my core specialization lies in teaching the paper AA, AAA and SBL. I'm also a registered mentor for the Oxford Brooks University. In terms of my achievements, uh, my passing rates, uh, sh it should be AAA, sorry. My passing rates for AAA are above the global averages. And that is one of the unique feature of my online classes that each session my passing rates for AAA are above the AAA global averages. And you know the AAA global averages are very low, and I will be speaking of that in my orientation session today. I've conducted 13 AAA ACCA webinars from March 2018 to September 2021, which were organized by ACCA Pakistan, and that's the highest number of webinars taken by any tutor for ACCA Pakistan. I'm now conducting my own webinar to success series for the last one and a half year known as webinars to success. In terms of my affiliation, I head the online teaching platform, which is my own setup, Kashif Kamran's digital learning known as KKTL. And that's where you are taking this AAA course from. I'm also affiliated with PAC, which is a gold approved learning provider of ACCA in Lahore, Pakistan. And I'm also connected with Civit College in India. So that's my tutor profile. Now let's move on and start looking at how can you be connected with me as a teacher. In the social media era we are living in, it's very important that you know the possible ways to get connected with me. You can get connected with me on my Instagram page, which is instagram.com slash kashif.kamran. You can connect with me on my KKDL Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash KKDLP. You can follow me on LinkedIn at my LinkedIn uh, profile given in front of your screen. You can watch my videos on YouTube, any extra videos, any extra supports you would like to watch. You can email me your answers for review at AAA mock at the rate gmail.com. So this is extremely important for all of you because during the course of your classes, if you want to email me any question for review and you want me to check it and give you a feedback to your answers, you can do that on AAA mock at the rate gmail.com. And you can follow me on my website, which is kashifkamran.com. So these are possible ways to connect. You're already in the WhatsApp group. You know my number and you know how to interact with the tutor. Now, moving away from how to get connected, let's start looking at the core part of the AAA orientation. Let's start looking at the paper itself. AAA, understanding the paper. Now, first of all, in terms of the broad forward knowledge, there are two knowledge inputs uh, which are required for AAA. Number one is the AA paper for sure, and then is the SBR paper. If you, if you got exemptions from AA, uh, because that's one of the frequently asked questions, then you should not be worrying about uh, how would you recover the AA knowledge because my course is very deep and very complete. And uh, if you go through my course, you will gain the right knowledge and the right confidence uh, on the side of the auditing knowledge, uh, which is needed to pass the AAA paper. So if you have not given the AA paper, that should not be any issue. But if you have given, it uh, could be an added advantage because you might understand things more quickly and more easier. Because you know, uh, for AAA, AA is the essential input. SPR, 
to me is a very, very important input. And that's the reason I recommend all my students either to give SPR before AAA or to give SPR with AAA. If you have already passed your SBR in the last six months, or you have passed your SBR in the last one year, you are in a very good bracket because you will have up-to-date accounting knowledge and you will need less time to revise the accounting knowledge. All accounting standards, which are part of SBR syllabus, are examinable in AAA. Now, in what context are they examined? and in which syllabus areas are they examined and how much depth of an accounting standards you should be knowing. I will be sharing light on that shortly. But yes, SBR do play a very crucial part in your success in the AAA paper. So you need to revise your accounting standards. You need to ensure that the gap between SBR and AAA is as less as possible because that will give you an added advantage in the AAA paper, and I will be sharing emphasis on how and where. So these are two essential inputs you need for the AAA paper. Now, moving away from the two essential inputs, let's look at the paper format. Now, the paper format for AAA is pretty simple. Uh, you can see in front of your screen that there are three questions. All are compulsory questions, so there is no choice. There is one question in the section A, and then there are two questions in the section B of the paper. In the section A, you have the question number one, which is for 40 technical marks and 10 professional marks. And in the section B, you have the question two and the question three with 20 technical marks each and five professional marks each. So in total, you have 20 professional marks and 80 technical marks in the AAA paper. Now it's a pretty simple looking paper format and you have three hours and 15 minutes to do this paper. I will be doing a separate session on time management uh, after the orientation uh, in the next week to come. So I will not be discussing the time management of the paper because I will do another crisp, quick session on time management separately because I want to investigate the time management very carefully because it is one of an important subject matter of the AAA paper. So three questions, all compulsory, split into section A and section B, and you have a split of 80 technical marks and 20 professional marks. Now let's further investigate the paper and further investigate the syllabus. So you have a very good command on the paper, the syllabus and the structure and how things will come in question number one, two and three. Because AAA is a very organized paper, it's a very structured paper. But on the same time, it is a challenging paper because the passing rate is low. So we need to do a balance between a very structured paper and a very challenging paper through this orientation session today. Inside the syllabus, AAA has seven syllabus areas, which is right in front of your screen. And the seven syllabus areas consist of A, B, C, D, then E, F, G. The syllabus area A is regulatory environment, B is ethical and professional issues, C is practice management and quality management, D is planning and audit of the historical financial statements, E is completion and reporting, F is other assignments, and G is current issues. Now, in terms of these syllabus areas in front of your screen, you, you can see that two syllabus areas are marked in red, which is the syllabus area D and E. They are the core part of the AAA paper. And this is the part of the AAA paper which needs the SBR knowledge because the question from D and E will test your knowledge around accounting treatments. You need to comment on the accounting treatments. You need to identify what is wrong in the accounting treatment. You need to identify what management has done wrong in the given accounting treatment in the case study. So uh, knowing what is wrong, wrong in the accounting treatment or identifying what is wrong in the accounting treatment or identifying what wrong management has done in the accounting treatment is what comes from syllabus area D and E. In a question on risk, 
in a question on evidence and in a question on reporting. So please note this down very carefully. A question on risk, a question on reporting. So these are the two R's and a question on evidence. So these are three topics which, ex which are examined in uh, where you need to know the accounting knowledge because in the case study, there will be accounting issues. Uh, management might have done a wrong accounting treatment or the management thinking about the accounting treatment is wrong and you need to tell why it is wrong and what is the likely implication of the wrong accounting treatment for the financial statements or for the audit report. So syllabus area D and E is critical and that's, uh, that's the reason I highlighted them in red. You will find the syllabus area D and E in my portal under the heading of block three. So when you come to the block three, you need to give significant time uh, 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 of your total study time on block three. Block one, block two, block four should be done very quickly. But block three is a block which will take a lot of time when you see my portal. And I hope you have seen on my portal the block one, two, three, four. That is a category of how things are on my portal. And I will just be connecting the blocks with my syllabus for your guidance. But the block three is the most critical block where I think you should spend 50% of your total time you're giving to AAA. So this is the syllabus, not very, not very deep, just seven syllabus areas, current issues, leave that aside. Current issues are only examinable when there is uh, some examining team support available on it, like examining team writes an article on it, or examining team gives a hint on the current issue, like from a mock exam published for September paper. Otherwise than that, current issue is not a regular feature of AAA. It is not something which comes in every single exam setting, March, June, September, December, no. Current issue comes, uh, what, what is my relevance to current issue is that uh, in, like, in like last two years, you must have seen current issue only coming once. So current issue only comes in when there is a proper support from the examining team on it uh, by writing an article or there is some sort of a hint from the examining team uh, by through the mock exam. Now we know there is a current issue, uh, which is still a current issue, uh, and that is on my portal, which is known as climatical risk and the auditor responsibility. So you will still go with that current issue for September and December exams, and you will still watch my video on that current issue because that is still relevant for exams in 2023. If there is any change in the current issue in the next few months, I will be updating that and updating you in the WhatsApp group. But currently, when you sit down to study, you're not looking at seven syllabus areas. You are primarily looking at six syllabus areas. And in the six syllabus areas, D and E should take 50% of your time. Is that clear to all of you? Before we move on and further investigate how the syllabus gets connected with the paper and what sort of approach you need to take on for accounting standards. Is everyone sound and clear so far, so forth? Okay, that's great. Now let's move on and look at the paper and how the paper gets connected with the syllabus. Now I've just given you an investigation of the paper, three questions, one in section A and two in section B. And I've just given you an overview of the syllabus from syllabus area A, to syllabus area G. And I've just emphasized on that syllabus area D and E is the core syllabus area. Now let's see how the syllabus gets connected with the paper. Syllabus versus the paper. Now listen to this very, very carefully. If you want to prepare yourself in a good manner, you want to set a very good timetable of how you should be preparing for September or December exams, and this particular slide in front of your screens would be helpful. And don't worry, the slides will be shared with you on the portal and everything I will be writing on the screen will be shared with you on the portal so you can take a printout later. Just concentrate with a pen and paper currently. Section A of the paper where you have 40 technical marks and 10 professional marks. Question number one. Section A, syllabus area D, planning and audit of historical financial statement will only be tested in question one. So syllabus area D, which is about planning and the audit of the historical financial statement, 
will only be tested in question number one. I hope you all look at this word very carefully. Only. Only means syllabus area D will not come in section B. Is that clear to all of you? So can, can you find syllabus area D in section B of the paper? Never. Because it says will only be tested in question one. And each time you open any past paper and your real exam in September and December, the section A is developed from the syllabus area D. The significant number of marks in section A are coming from syllabus area D. And I will be emphasizing on that more shortly. Then you come to the section B. In section B, we have two questions, right? Question number two and question number three. Question two and three each have 20 technical marks and five professional marks each. In section B, what will happen? Syllabus area E, completion, review, and reporting. And syllabus area F, other assignments, will only be tested in question two and three. Again, look at this word, only. So can you find syllabus area E and F in section A? No. So can you find a question in section A which touch the syllabus area E and F? Never. So section B, uh, there are two syllabus areas which are extremely important for section B because examining team is saying will only be tested in question two and three. So E and F becomes important. So technically, which three syllabus areas are important? D, E, and F. And you know, the D and E is the one which needs the SBR knowledge, right? And F is a syllabus area which is about other assignments, which is one of another core area of the AAA paper because you don't do other assignments in the AA paper or the F8 paper. And all of you will be doing it for the first time. It's a pretty simple syllabus area, easy to understand based upon your knowledge coming from syllabus area A, B, C, D, E. So uh, is everyone clear so far, so forth? Section A, syllabus area D, section B, syllabus area E and F. One of the question, one of the question in section B is must to come from E. E can never be omitted. D can never be omitted. D can never be omitted. D is must. So you will never find a section A question without D. You will never find a section B without E. F. F is like regular, but you can see omission of F in some exam settings. So it's not every time in March, June, September, December that you see uh, something from F. Yes, F come very regular. It could be two out of four exam settings. It could be three out of four exam settings, but it can. it is not four out of four exam settings. So it is a regular area, right? But syllabus area E is in every single exam setting. Syllabus area D is in every single exam setting. So that means syllabus area D and E again becoming important because they are mandatory. They also involve the SPR knowledge. And you cannot survive the AAA paper if you are weak on syllabus area D and E because one question from E, one question from D is a must. F sometime comes, sometime don't come. Is everyone clear so far, so forth in D, E, F? And is everyone clear with A and B? Any problems, any confusions with it? So when you're studying the syllabus, will you give importance to D and E? Will you give good amount of time to D and E? Right, so ensure that you are giving a good amount of time to D and E and even F because F is like regular, but sometimes you do see omission of F. You have to go in the order. I'll, I'll just come to that, um, Renal. So there are lots of questions the students are asking and the answers of which are ahead. So that's the reason I'm not answering them. Okay, now looking at what else, uh, what else is in the syllabus. Syllabus area A, Syllabus area B and syllabus area C. This should be quality management. This word has changed. 
It should be quality management, not quality control, because that is a change of term we are looking for since September 22. There's a typing mistake here. Should be quality management, not quality control. Syllabus area A, B, C. Can be tested anywhere in the paper. So you can find them in A, you can find them in B. So there is no positioning for A, B, C. There is a positioning for D. There is a positioning for E. There is a positioning for F. But A, B, C, they are flexible. An examiner can use them anywhere across the paper. A, B, C. We have seen so many uh, instances in the past paper where syllabus area B has come in section A as well as in section B. We have seen so many past papers where quality management and practice management was in the section A as well as in the section B, and sometime only in section B, not in section A. And same goes with the regulatory environment. So many instances where regulatory environment is in A and B both, and sometime only in B, not in A. So they are flexible syllabus areas. I hope you're getting clarity on that. And then comes the last one, syllabus area G, current issues, only examine, only examine when an article is written on it. Is, is that clear to all of you? So we, we'll keep a watch on it for September exams. We'll keep a watch on it for December exams. And if there is any development on a current issue, apart from the one which is already available on the portal on climatical risk, I will keep updating you in the WhatsApp group. So we'll keep monitoring any current issues till the first week of August for September exams and current issues till the first week of November for the December exams. So current issues are only examinable when there is a support from the examining team. Now is everyone clear how the six syllabus areas will be examined, A, B, C, D, E, F, and which are important? Where is the SPR knowledge? In which syllabus areas you need the SPR knowledge? So D and E is the integral part of the AAA, number one. F is a very regular part of the AAA. You should know what is in section A. You should know what is in section B. And then you should know the ABC is uh, like the flexible part of the syllabus. And again, uh, this word control should be replaced with management. So once I put the slides on the portal, I will replace it with management. Currently, there is a typing mistake. So I'm just ensuring that in the recording of this live orientation, uh, you get this message in the recording that the word has to be management, not control. Okay, now that's the syllabus versus the paper. Now, honestly, tell me, it, does it seem like a very organized paper in terms of how the syllabus gets split into section A and B? Is it like very organized paper? Uh, when you look at the past papers, you know, section A is D, section B is E, uh, F might come, might not come, and A, B, C are flexible. Will, will that help you devise your approach, how much time you should give to A, B, C, and how much time you should give to D, E, F? So it is a very structured paper, right? It is a very organized paper, the, but the problem is it's a challenging paper because the passing rates are low. And we need to investigate today why the passing rates are low, because that will help you. Okay, now moving on from the syllabus versus the paper analysis. Let's take a quick look inside section A, which is 40 technical marks and 10 professional marks. And we've already decided that the major chunk of section A is syllabus area D. So let's critically investigate what else can come in section A besides the syllabus area D. Overview of the question number one, section A. Set at the planning stage of the audit with 40 technical and 10 professional marks. So the question number one is set at the planning stage of the audit. And because it's set at the planning stage of the audit, so syllabus area D becomes very important because the syllabus area D is planning and the audit of the historical financial statement. You know the audit starts with planning. That's, that's fundamentally the first stage of the audit cycle, planning the audit. So the question number one, the, when you start the paper, the paper starts in the logical order and it starts with the planning stage of the audit every time. The bulk of the 40 technical marks are utilized for risk assessment, which you already have done in the AA paper as well. But in, in the AAA paper, the risk assessment are of three types, business risk, audit risk, and the risk of material misstatement which is mandatory part of the question number one. So bulk of the 40 marks, uh, sometime 20, sometime 25, 
of the total 40 marks are put on risk. Uh, business risk never comes alone. So anytime you get a question on business risk in the second part, you will find a question on audit risk or risk of material misstatement. Yes, questions on audit risk and risk of material misstatement can come alone. But every time the examiner asks you business risk, so it will be question number 1A, business risk, question number 1B, audit risk and ROM. But audit risk and ROM can come as individual questions without business risk. Right, so in, in the question number one, you might have parts, right? A, B, C, D. So the first two parts logically are put on risk. One of them can be on business risk. The other can be on audit risk. Or one of the part can be on risk and the other parts can be on other syllabus areas. But risk takes like 50%, 50 to 60% of the total 40 marks. I hope you're clear on that, right? So the bulk of the marks goes on risk. And at, mostly we have the question number one split into four requirements, mostly four. Right now, moving on and investigating the question one further, the other examinable topics in question number one includes more consistently or regularly featured are. What else? is a regular feature of the question number one besides substantial marks going on risk ethical issues, which is primarily the syllabus area B. Matters in planning the first year audit, which is again syllabus area D. Evaluating the component auditor strategy, which is again syllabus area D, planning. Matters in accepting the new audit client or an additional engagement from an existing client, which is the syllabus area C. Audit procedures, which is again the syllabus area D. Knowledge areas like money laundering, responsibility of the auditor for laws and regulations, and using the work of others or joint audit, which is the syllabus area A. See, we, we, we said that A, B, C are flexible. So A, B, C are flexible. You can find instances of A, B, C on your screen, even in section A. You can find B, C, A. But risk, risk part here is the D. And then you can see so much D coming here as well. So D is the substantial hold of the question number one. Is everyone clear? Now, once you start uh, the syllabus and once you come to this uh, block three where you find the syllabus area D and you go through the syllabus area D, I hope this particular slide will be of interest to you. How, think come, how think things comes in the question number one. So this is just a summary of how a question one looks in most cases in the AAA paper. Now, moving from this to the section B of the paper, where we have two questions, two and three. And we know one of them is from syllabus area E for sure, right? Section B, deep investigation, consists of two questions. One of them, one of them is set at the completion and reporting stage, and this is a must. Syllabus area E. I hope you're clear on that, right? E cannot be omitted, just like D, D cannot be omitted. So one of the two questions in section B has to be from completion and reporting, which is basically the syllabus area E. The question at the completion and reporting stage, which is the syllabus area E, cannot just purely be a reporting question, it could include element of completion stage activities as well. Look at this completion and reporting syllabus area E. So a lot of time the student thinks that the one of the question will be on reporting. No, it could be on completion plus reporting or it could alone be on reporting. So it's up to the examiner whether the examining team wants to give you a whole question on reporting or a question which includes completion and reporting. Sometimes we have seen very less marks on reporting, like 15 marks on completion and five marks on reporting out of the 20 technical marks. Sometimes we even seen a whole 20 marks on reporting and no marks on completion. Sometimes we have seen all the 20 marks on completion and no marks on reporting. So these are all possibilities, right? But just imagining that the question num one of the question in section B will be reporting. That is very wrong. So it is completion and reporting. So once you uh, go over my course on the portal, you will understand what completion is. 
and what sort of questions can come on completion in the AAA paper. Is everyone clear with this completion and reporting so far? So I can move on to the next bullet. Okay, great. So let's move on. Students normally assume this question to be purely based on report audit report knowledge, which is wrong. I've just made that clear, right? Because just assuming a report will come and nothing else will come, you need to understand it is completion and reporting. So both can come. This question is set at the completion stage. The, the question number one is set at the planning stage, right? This question, which could be either two, either three, we're not sure of that, but one of the question has to be on completion and reporting. It could be question number two, it could be question number three. This question is set at the completion stage and examiner mentioned in the opening paragraph of the case study, which you will be reading, the audit report is to be signed next week. So you will immediately click, oh, this is a completion stage question or audit is nearing completion or the manager is performing a review of the working paper or an engagement quality review is being performed. These are indications that the question is set at the completion and reporting stage. So when you read the opening paragraph, there could, there could be a sentence like such, which gives you an indication that this is a completion and reporting stage question. And also by looking at the requirement, you become very clear that this is a completion and reporting stage question. Uh, when you read the question number one, in the question number one, it is set at the planning stage. So examiner is saying you are planning the upcoming audit or you are about to start the audit. You are about to start the planning for the upcoming audit. So that you, you immediately recall, oh, this is a planning stage question. So the opening paragraphs in the case study uh, sets the tone uh, at which stage of the audit the question is set in. So one of the question in section B will be from syllabus area E and you should be very strong as a student in syllabus area E. And again, you need the SBR knowledge, accounting knowledge in this question. Moving on further. The question at the completion stage of the audit is as follow. Completion stage and the reporting stage together, right? So the question set at the completion and the reporting stage is as follow. Number one, evaluating the accounting matters and explaining the evidence in the working paper file. That's one of the question. Evaluating the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence gathered by the audit team and recommend further procedures. Number three, evaluating the going concern matters, something coming from the AA knowledge, procedures on going concern and the, uh, and the implication for the audit report. Number fourth, evaluating the matters to be communicated to those charged with governance. Number five, evaluating the accounting treatment and the implication of the uncorrected accounting treatments on the audit report. Critical appraisal of the audit report, finding the weaknesses in the audit report. Number six. Number seven, auditor responsibility for other information in the annual report and how auditor address the responsibility for other information in the audit report. These are seven possible questions, which are very regular feature of section B. A lot of time you must have seen the word accounting matters, accounting matters, matters, which is where you need the SPR knowledge. So a question at, uh, at the completion and reporting stage can take possible forms which are currently on your screen. And a lot of those questions requires the accounting knowledge. So you will understand these seven possible questions definitely when you uh, have done the syllabus and you have taken strong control of the syllabus. Uh, and then you can revisit back my presentation slides to know that have I done each of the seven questions? Have I found each of the seven questions in my practice of the past papers? So you can use it as a checklist at the end of your preparations. So this is how one of the question comes into the section B, which is from syllabus area E. Now the next one. The other question, which could be two or three, depending upon where the examiner is putting the question from uh, completion and reporting, either in two or in three. The other question left in section B is open and any syllabus area from A, B, C and F and F can be examined here. D and E 
can't be examined here as they have their specific allocations. I hope you're clear with this now. D and E have their specific allocations, right? You know, D comes in question number one, E comes in one of the section B. We're talking about another question in section B, which is open and anything from ABC or anything from F. We know F is very consistent. F is very regular with the other question. So the other question, the top candidate is F. Three out of four exam settings, F is the top candidate for the other question. But in one out of four exam settings, ABC is the very top contender for the other question. Must most frequently tested topics in this section B question includes evaluating the quality management, professional and ethical matters. So that's from the syllabus area B and C. Question on other assignments focused on procedures, matters in accepting engagement, ethical issues and specific inquiries. So that's from syllabus area F and money laundering. That's from syllabus area A. So I have given you examples from A, F, B, C, which are which have been tested in the recent past papers. So is everyone sound and clear on structure of A, section A, syllabus area D, likely topics? And is everyone clear with section B, likely topics, which is must, which is mandatory? And how one of the question will be set at completion and reporting stage and how the other question is being kept open. Okay, that's great. Now moving on and looking at how the triple S syllabus, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, is connected with my course. Now, when you look at my course on the portal and you look at the syllabus of a AAA, I have divided my course into four blocks. When you see the portal, block one consists of the syllabus area A, regulatory environment. Block two consists of two syllabus areas, B and C, which is ethical, professional, quality management and practice management. Block three consists of syllabus area D and E, both of which are important, which is where you need the SBR knowledge. And I'll tell you how would you revise the SBR knowledge shortly. But D and E is the core part, right? So block three becomes very core. Then in the block four, you look at the syllabus area F, which is again a very regular feature of the section B question. So every block you are doing, you should have an orientation. You should have an observation how this block contributes to a 100 marks paper. So this block contributes very heavily. This block contributes very heavily to a 100 marks paper. Uh, the other blocks do contribute, but that's that's like on a minor basis. So is everyone clear how the syllabus is structured on the portal? One, two, three, four. And is everyone clear how the one, two, three, four is connected with the syllabus? And can you now identify which of the blocks are important? And I believe 50% of your total time 50% of the time should go here and the rest 50 should go on one to four. So half the time should be spent on block three and the remaining half the time should be split into one to four, which should not take much time. One to four are comparatively easier to go through. Uh, three takes a lot of time because you also need to revise your accounting standards. Okay, that's my tutor course. Okay, now course on the portal, when you log into the portal with your passwords, your user email and passwords, and you look at the course on the portal, how you should use it. Now, when you look at the course on the portal, the course on the portal is divided into 11 chapters, meaning 11 sections, namely, I hope you've seen the portal by now. And there are 11 chapters, which includes the orientation as well. And those 11 chapter means the 11 segregations, 11 segregations of the syllabus or 11 sections of the syllabus. Let's see what they are. The first section is orientation, uh, where this orientation will be uploaded shortly. Then you have block one, then you have block two, block three, block four, then you have current issues, which includes the climatical risk, so far, so forth. If there is any change in current issues, I'll update you. Then if you want to take further guidance on professional marks, a separate guidance on professional marks after completing the, uh, the course in logical order, uh, there are there is a section on professional marks. Then the December 22 webinar, which is an exclusive webinar, not available to public, only to my registered students. Then there is a December 22 mock debrief as an additional practice and support. March 23 webinar and the June 23 mock debrief. This is all practice. This is all practice, right? 
So look at the last four elements. You have dense practice of the recent papers here. And you will also, uh, I will also be uploading the September 23 mock debrief for the September students. And I will also be uploading the December 23 mock debrief for the December student once that is available from ACCA. So this list will continue. So for the September students, you will also see another chapter coming in, the 12th chapter, which is the September 23 mock. And for the December student, you will see uh, not just the September mock, you will also see the December mock. So two more chapters will be added for you, chapter number 12 and chapter number 13. But this is the order in which the portal has been designed by me as a tutor. Have you seen this order on the portal, all of you? Now, how to use it? Should you go in the sequence? Should you break the sequence? Now I'm coming to that frequently asked question. Should you maintain the sequence? How should you go with these 11 chapters? Okay, now this is how these things are on the portal. Uh, for a regulatory environment, the block one, you have total of nine lectures with 18 hours. Uh, for block two, which is syllabus area B and C, you have total of nine lectures with 19 hours. Then you have the syllabus area D and E under block three. You have 14 lectures of 36 hours. And I just told you 50% of your time should go here. Other assignments, block four, seven lectures and 17 hours. Current issue, only one lecture, one hour. Professional marks, six lectures of three hours. December webinar, five lectures of 12 hours. Mock, one lecture, one hour. And then you can see Then you can see the March webinar, eight lectures of 12 hours. And then you can see the June mock, four lectures, six and a half hours. Look at the last four areas here. This 12 and 12 is 24 and six is 30 and 31. Approximately 32 hours of dense practice. A lot of times the student asks, does your course include practice? 32 hours of dense practice separately. And even when you're watching block one, there is a practice in it. Block two, there is a practice in it. Block three, there is a practice in it. Block four, there is a practice in it. So every block has its own practice. But apart from that, there is a separate 32 hours of practice, which will be a mind opener for all of you. So every block you are doing, you should know the number of lectures and hours so you can plan your studies effectively. And you should know what is the total number of hours. You can just make a sum, sum up of this to know how much is the total number of hours on the portal and how much is the total number of lectures on the portal. I hope this summary would help you. You can take a printout of this particular slide and whichever area you have done, you can just put a tick mark. Regulatory environment, nine lectures done, tick mark. Ethical issues, nine lectures done, tick mark. So you can just use it as a checklist of your course coverage and what percentage of course have you completed. Is that clear to all of you? And I've put core for block two, three, four. So block two, three, four is very, very critical when you are going with the AAA paper. So can this slide number 24 on your screen be used as a checklist of your course coverage? How much course have been completed? Can you take a printout of this and put somewhere on your reading table on, on your reading desk? And can you just evaluate every week, every 10 days, every fortnightly, where are you standing? So should you should check your progress every week, every Sunday, every Sunday, check your progress. See, where are you standing every Sunday? How much percentage of the course have you completed by looking at this checklist? Now, how to go? Should you go in the order? What is the recommended way of going over so many lectures and so many hours? Let's find the answer for that now. Order of the course. Can you see this flow chart in front of your screen? Order of the course, orientation, first order. After the orientation, block one, then the block two. I have, I have made block three red and there is a note. There is a note here for block three. In each block, the sequence will be followed except for block three. So in block one, you will follow the sequence in which sequence the lectures are given. In block two, you will follow the sequence of the lectures given. In block three, there is some uh, 
there is some different sequence which I will just be guiding you. But after the block one, you do the block two, then after the block two, you do the block three. But within the block three, in which sequence will you do the lectures? I'll just be guiding you that. Then block four in sequence. Then after the block four, the calendar issue. After the current issues, the webinars and the mock debrief. And after you've done the mock brief, debriefs and webinars, lastly, the last thing you will do before exams is professional marks. You will understand them better. If you do them now, you will not understand. You will understand the professional marks only after you have done the webinars and mock debrief. Is that clear to all of you? So the last thing you will watch is the professional marks. Right. And the first thing you will watch is the orientation. And then you go in the order block one, block two, block three, block four, current issues and the webinars. Is this flowchart clear? Can you take a printout of this as well and put on your reading tables and on your study, uh, on your study desks? Right. So when you get into block one, go in the order. Block two, go in the order. Block three, some change of order. I'll guide you. Now let's go one by one in each one of them. Firstly, you go in the block one, go in sequence and complete all lectures. So go in the sequence, right? And complete all lectures. Then you get to the block two, go in sequence and complete all lectures. After you have completed all lectures of the block two, jump to, can you see this word jump to? Jump to December 22 webinar, day three. You, you know there are webinars given on the portal, right? So you go to the December 22 webinar on the portal and you go to the day three of the webinar for additional practice on quality management. So after you've completed all lectures of block two, you will jump to the day three of the December 22 webinar for an additional practice on quality management. That will mark the end of the block two. Is everyone clear with the jump two? Any problems with the jump two? Are you, are you clear with how you should go down in block two, all of you? And please ensure you take a printout of all this, right? Next, block three, where you have to do lots of jumps. Block three, the most difficult, the most technical, most of the time will go here. You need to take a print out of this block three and put on your reading tables because block three has a very different sequence to follow. You need to complete all lectures of block three by there is, there is some distortion in order which you need to follow for lecture four and lecture five only. Rest all lectures will be done in order. So lecture one in order, lecture two in order for block three. Lecture three in order. Lecture four. There is some distortion to follow for lecture four and lecture five. So the moment you come to lecture four, there is some distortion here. Then you get to lecture five. There is some distortion here. Then in order, lecture six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, whatever they are, go in order. So only problem will come when you get to the lecture four and five. Rest all has to be done in order. Is that clear to all of you? And I'll just tell you what is the distortion in lecture four and five. So follow the order in block three, but for lecture four and lecture five, there is some distortion. And I will, get, I will guide you the reason for distortion and what is the distortion. Rest all lectures will be done in order. I hope you're clear. The distortion of order for lecture four and lecture five as illustrated in the next slide is due to some changes in the way the topic is now examined and further practice. These changes were brought by the examining team from September 22. Uh, September 22 exams, there were some changes. So I incorporated those changes in my lecture four and lecture five, which was recorded before the September 22 through some distortions. Now, September 23 students and December 23 students, when you watch lecture four, you need to uh, go with some distortions and those are on the next slides. But those distortions would help you to be up to date with additional practice and those distortions will help you be uh, help you to be up to date with how things are changed from September 22 exams. So is, is that clear the reason of distortion? 
So reason of distortion is to implement the change, which came from September 22. And reason for distortion is to give you further practice for lecture number four and five. And what are lecture four and five? Risk. And you know, risk is the most critical part. It is like 50% marks, 50% marks in the question number one. So you know the importance of lecture four and five. Lecture four and five is on risk, business risk, audit risk, and ROM. And that's where the distortion has to come in. Let's see what is the distortion. Follow the sequence on your screen. Look at the arrows. In block three, you will first start with lecture one, then lecture two, then lecture three. Complete the first three lectures in the order. Then you come to the lecture four and the distortion starts. You will first watch the lecture four. And after you've watched the lecture four, you will then jump to December 22 webinar day one. Then you will jump to December 22 webinar day two. Then you will jump to December 22 mock day one. Then you will jump to March 23 webinar day two for additional practice and changes which have come since September 22. Then you will jump to March 23 webinar day four. Then you will jump to March 23 mock day one. Then June 23 mock orientation and then June 23 mock day two. And then finally you come to the addendum to lecture four block three, which is on the portal. So after you watch the lecture four on the portal block three, you will move to these webinars, webinars, mock, webinars, webinars, mock, mock, mock. They are given, right? You know where they are on the portal, right? And then you finally come back to the addendum to lecture four block three. Uh, and the, the titles you're looking here is the exactly the same titles on the portal, right? So you will have no difficulties in finding them. Now, after this long distortion of lecture four, you finally come to lecture five. So see, from lecture four, you have to take a lot of distortion, but that distortion will really be helpful to give you the right mindset for September 23 and December 23 exams and uh, the practice, lots of practice. Webinar and mock means practice. And you need practice, right, for risk, because risk is the core area to pass in the AAA paper. And then you come to the lecture five, some uh, distortions for lecture five as well. After you watch the lecture five, you will go to the addendum to lecture five, block three. And after you finish off with the addendum to lecture five, block three, you will go to December 22, webinar day one. You will then go to March 23, webinar day three. You will then go to the March 23, mock day one. And after completing all that, you come back to the lecture number six and you will go in the order for lecture six to lecture 11. No further distortion. And that marks the end of the block three. 50% of your total time should be on the block three. Please look at the picture in front of your screen and ensure you take a printout of this. And once you come to the block three, follow the order. Will you follow this order? Will this uh, printout help you follow this order? Will you ensure that after the lecture for the diversions you need to take? Are you clear with the diversions you need to take after lecture five? And from lecture six onwards, there is no diversion. But this, these diversions will set the right tone of how you should be preparing for September 23 and December 23. And the best part is the diversion from lecture four, which is audit risk and ROM, the lecture four is about audit risk. And the lecture four is about the risk of material misstatement. And the lecture five is about business risk. So the diversions you are taking is giving you practice. It's giving you practice, right? And the practice is making you perfect. Uh, after the diversions and you've completed the block three, you will be so good on the practice of audit risk and ROM. And you will be so good on the practice of business risk, which are two core areas. Is that clear? Will you be taking a printout of the order you need to maintain in block three? Then after the block three, you go to the block four. In block four, after, sorry, after complete further, further, after completing the block three in the order shown in the previous slide, jump to the following additional practice around block three. Now, have you seen how to do the block three on the previous slide this way? Is everyone clear with this? So this is how you do the block three. Now, after you've done the block three and look at the red, red says block three ends. Now, when the block three ends, what next to do? You are not jumping to block four. 
after the block three ends, you need to do further practice of the whole block three because block three is crucial. So after completing the block three in the order shown in the previous slide, slide number 29, jump to the following additional practice around block three. March 23 webinar day six for additional practice on audit evidence and reporting. Syllabus area E, right, which is part of block three. Then March 23 mock debrief session number two for additional practice on audit evidence and report. Then June 23 mock debrief day four for additional practice on audit evidence and report. So three further practice materials for you uh, on evidence and reporting. So look at these three here, evidence and reporting. So you will get further support on evidence you get further support on reporting such a core area for syllabus area E. And you know, syllabus area E is very important. So after you complete the block three, as shown on slide 29, you will do these three additional webinars and mocks so that you get good amount of practice on evidence and reporting. Is that clear to all of you? Great, and the diversions, the, the diversions you saw on the previous slide here for lecture four and lecture five. So lecture four is audit risk and ROM and the diversion is giving you practice and the changes in, uh, since September 22. And the lecture five is business risk and the diversions is giving you practice and the changes in business risk from September 22, right? So please take printout of the slides and keep it on your work table or a desk where you study or in a file. Okay, then block four. Block four is simple, complete all lectures in sequence, just like block one and two, no diversions in block four, no diversions in block one and two. The only diversions is in the block three. After you complete all lectures in sequence in block four, jump to December 22 webinar day four for additional practice, uh, March 23 day five webinar for additional practice, June 23 mock day three for additional practice. So you get additional practice, additional practice, additional practice, uh, after you've completed the lectures in sequence and the practice makes you perfect, practice makes you successful. Is that clear how to go with block four? So will you take us, will you keep the printout of block one, two, three, four with you on the table or in a file so you know in which order to go with? A lot of time I, I find WhatsApp messages, uh, which order, which sequence, how to do, how to do. I think, uh, I think this orientation is helping you out with that, right? So I, I believe uh, those WhatsApp messages will disappear now for the next few months. Yes, please take a printout of the orientation slide for sure and keep, a, keep that in file. It's a checklist uh, to check the progress, to check how much course has been completed because a lot of time the student asks where we should be after a month. You should evaluate yourself where you are standing after a month, right? <clears throat> okay, now finally, down with course completion. By when you should complete the course, that's a big question. Now to me, this is what I suggest. For September 23 students and for December 23 students, if you are a September 23 student, because the orientation is for both, for September 23 students first, complete the course till 16th August. Yes, there could be plus three, four days. You, can, you might complete it by 20th, even that is fine. Don't delay beyond 20th. So take a timeline. You are standing on the 18th of June today, right? So even if you manage to complete by 18th of August, that's two months. So you have two months from now to complete course. Now make a timetable. Look at number of lectures in block one, two, three, four. Look at the total number of lectures you need to watch and see whether you study on every day. Are you a full-time student? Are you a part-time student? Uh, are you engaged with a job and you only get times on Saturdays and Sundays? So everyone knows the limitations and the challenges you have every 24 hours of, of every day you're spending. So knowing your challenges, knowing your limitations, knowing your constraints, make a timetable today for the next two months. 
see how much time can you give on a weekly basis over the next two months so that you effectively complete the order of the course I just guided you by the 18th of August, right? So, hey, I'm just coming back to your question. Just give me a few minutes. Next, plan for an extensive past paper practice from 17th August. So if you complete on 16th, from the 17th, you will do extensive past paper practice. You must have done a lot of practice uh, in block one with my course, block two with my course, block three with my course, block four with my course. But after you've completed everything, you should do additional practice. You should do practice of the recent papers on the platform. Uh, I hope you know the practice platform, right? And on the practice platform, they've given you the recent papers from December 20 onwards. So start doing additional practice from December 20 onwards. And I think there are recent five papers, recent six papers, one paper for 20, two papers for 21, two papers for 22. So that's, this is a total of five recent papers they have up to December 22. Uh, currently, no paper has been uploaded for 23 uh, till the time I'm doing this orientation. Uh, quite be possible that in next few weeks, you get the 23 paper uploaded as well. But currently, there are five recent papers available, which you should practice after completing the whole course. You should enjoy doing these papers once you have the command on A, B, C, D, E, F. You, you will not be attempting the paper nicely if you have complete, if you've not completed the full course. So I will prefer that the five recent papers are done once you have completed the whole syllabus. And that should be after the 17th of August. Prepare for an extensive past paper practice. I hope you're clear with this, all of you. The next, plan to do the mock on the 1st of September, which ACC will publish by the mid of August. So plan to do it on the 1st of September uh, and you have the paper on the 4th of September. Uh, uh, I think that's the Monday. That's the first Monday of September. Watch the mock debrief, which I will be doing after the mock to self-evaluate your mock answer. So uh, suppose you do the mock on first, then on the second, watch my debrief, watch my video, play my video. Even you can play it as, at a speed of 1.5 and just keep your mock answer with you and watch my debrief and see what corrections needs to be done in. So you can self-evaluate your mock by the debrief session. Last day to submit assignments for review is 26th August. So any assignments you want to submit me and you want my feedback on the assignments, you know my email ID for that, triple a mock at the red gmail.com, which I've given you at the start of the session. Uh, you can submit assignments till 26th. Any assignments after 26th will not be marked will not be checked. So this is for September students. For December students, you have plenty of time from now. <laughs> Complete the course till 16th of November. So that means you psychologically have four months to do that from today. Uh, plan for extensive past paper practice from 17th November onwards. Plan to do the mock on the 1st of December. Uh, watch the mock debrief by the tutor after the mock to self-evaluate your your mock answers and the last date for you to submit the assignments is 26th of November. I will not mark the mock. I will do a debrief and the debrief will help you evaluate your mock, right? So September and December students, are you clear with the column on the left and the column on the right? Are there any December students in the orientation today? And I, I believe September students are more, but September and December students, are you looking at the timelines? There can be plus two, plus three, right? So these are not definite timelines. You can have an incremental impact on them, but try to be close. Try to be close to these deadlines as much as possible. So that's another frequently asked question, when to finish off the course. Okay, just one thing. There was a question coming from one student, uh, which I could answer now. A, there was a question from Zoheb. Sir, if I'm giving ATX2 in September uh, and I'm a full-time student, the same deadlines is good? Yes. If you are a full-time student, then same deadlines are good. Okay. Important instructions. 
it is must to read all articles recommended by the tutor in the pre-recorded lecture. So when you watch my pre-recorded lecture and I, I tell you in a pre-recorded lecture that read this article, then please read it. <coughs> it is must to read articles. Books, no. Articles must. It is must to read all articles recommended by the tutor in the pre-recorded lecture. I would prefer no kits, no books, past papers, only past papers and articles. That is it. So no need to invest in a book and a kit. Uh, Shaksham. Uh, is this clear reading of articles to all of you? So will you be reading the recommending articles and making your notes? Just skim over the articles. No need to read them like as if you're rote learning the article. Just skim the articles, read around them. No, no need of a rote learning. Make notes while reading the articles. And these notes will supplement your lecture notes from the given lecture. So my lecture notes and your notes prepared from articles will, will, will go together, right? So if, suppose you are watching my lecture and I recommended you to read an article and that is, for example, a lecture five of block one. So in the lecture five block one, my support files is the notes. And the additional is the notes you're making from the article, right? It's important to read articles, please. No book readings, but articles are watched. You cannot skip the articles. No student will ask me a question, can I skip the articles? It is must to read them. Kits are not required. Please, past papers. Past papers which are available on the Google Drive and the recent past papers available on the practice platform. That is it. Has everyone got the clear message on reading articles? No student will ask me a few weeks later, can I skip articles? You cannot skip articles. You can skip book. Submit assignments. Uh, you can submit me the assignments up to the 26th of September for the September students. Sorry, uh, 26th of August for the September students and 26th of November for the December students. You can submit me assignments at the dedicated email ID, triple mock at the red gmail.com. Uh, you will get a personalized feedback and expect two to three days response time on these assignments submitted. It could be lesser than that, but the maximum is two to three days. And I'll start checking the assignments from tomorrow, Monday. If you have emailed me any assignments previously, uh, please email me back uh, with the subject September 23 or with the subject December 23. And then you write the Suppose you're doing a, an assignment on money laundering, then write September 23 student underscore money laundering. September 23 student underscore auditor liability or December 23 student underscore money laundering and in the subject. So every time you email me, mention which session student you are in the subject so I can prioritize the emails accordingly. I can prioritize the September emails over December. Uh, at least I can respond to September emails in like two days and December emails in like three days. So at least you get benefit of that. Okay, passing rates and the failures in AAA, how to overcome the failures. Yes, I'll, I'll be coming to the uh, accounting knowledge after completing the orientation to so just wait for that. So I have a separate 10 minutes on accounting knowledge. Pass rates and overcoming failure. You know the passing rates in AAA are low and one of the lowest and among all strategic optional paper, ATX, AFM, APM. You have the lowest in AAA. You can see that in front of your screen from March 22 to March 23, the last five exam settings, on average, you know, 33% students pass the AAA paper and 67% fail. It is such a standard, standardized paper, such an organized paper, such a well-structured uh, paper, section A, section B, you know which syllabus areas will come in. Lots of knowledge coming from AA, SBR. Students are still failing. That means there is some problem with the way you are writing the answer. Now, once you take my course and once you watch the webinars and the mock debriefs, uh, which is very essential in block three and block four, you've seen so much, uh, you've seen in the sequence that you have to watch the debriefs and the webinars, additional practice. That additional practice will make you confident about how to write a good answer. 
the more assignments you submit, the more feedback you get from the tutor on your assignments, you will be among this. You will be in among this students who pass. If you're not submitting assignments, you're not practicing, you're not bothered about practicing the past papers, you're not even bothered about practicing the recent five papers in the last 10 to 12 days ahead of your exams, you're not bothered about doing the mock paper, you're just reading the books, you're just reading the articles. Technical content alone is a disaster. Triple A is a conceptual paper, it's a case study paper. It's a paper where you need to get involved in the case study, get things out of the case study. There is no generic writing. There is no generic way of writing the AAA paper. Everything has to be case oriented. Everything has to be adapted according to the case study, according to the requirements of the examiner. If any student synchronized the answer with the case, if, if any student uh, blend the answer with the case, you understand the requirement, what to do. And according to that, you blend your answer with the case study you will pass. But if you're writing generic, you have wrote learn, you have wrote learn the articles, you have wrote learn the BPP book, you've wrote learn the Kaplan book. It's alone, the technical knowledge is, is no success in the AAA paper. It's the application, it's the adaption of the knowledge. So AAA is not a wrote learn paper, right? If any student is thinking about wrote learning, no, 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 this is not a wrote learn paper. This is a case study paper. You are a manager in the AAA paper. You have to take decisions like a manager. You have to write an answer like a manager. You are interacting with your partner. Every question will start, you are a manager. So try to understand your role, try to understand your position, try to do justice with that in, in, in context of the case study. And this is all what you will learn from my lectures on the portal. So at the end of the day, when you do the practice of the recent five papers at the end of the, uh, before your exams, you will really get that role of a manager because you've taken my course. So this is some investigation why students fail in, and I will be doing a separate session on failures. I will be doing a separate session on how you can improve the chance of success. But in the orientation, I'm not touching upon them. I hope you got a summary, uh, which I was just discussing with you uh, when I'm looking at a 33% pass rate. I've done some sessions on YouTube, which you can watch in the meantime. Uh, you can see these hyperlinks. I will share these hyperlinks in the, in the WhatsApp group as well for your ease. Uh, analyzing failure in AAA paper and downtrends in pass rates. Uh, these are two good sessions which help you investigate why students fail in the AAA paper. And I can share these hyperlinks with you even uh, in the WhatsApp group as well for your ease to click and watch them. But I will be doing another very exclusive session in the next couple of days on failures in AAA and on time management because these are two crucial areas which needs further investigation apart from orientation. <laughs> Top reasons for failing poor time management, and I'll be doing a session on that shortly. Not reading the requirement carefully. I will be covering this in my reasons of failure already, the YouTube videos I've mentioned. Not linking answers to case. I've already uh, covered this in my recent YouTube videos I've shared with you. And weak in financial reporting knowledge. And I'm just coming to this because that's where I need to talk about how SBR contributes. Just give me five minutes and I'll come to that weak in financial reporting knowledge because I need to give... 20 good minutes on SPR in my orientation today. Lisa Weaver, she's your examiner. She heads the examining team and she has some suggestions for how you can pass the AAA paper. I am I'm giving myself a pause for two minutes and I just want you to read what's coming in the screen in front of you because you need to be successful in the upcoming exams and you need to understand what your examiner is telling you. So start reading it now and I'm just muting myself for two minutes. Okay, I hope you've all read it. So your examiner wants you to pass the paper, but students are not passing. 33% are passing, 67% is failing. So that means you're not understanding what your examiner wants you to do. She says, I want candidates who choose to attempt this paper because this is an optional paper, right? You choose in it yourself. And I, I really uh, get amazed 
that a student choose to attempt a AAA paper. It's not something forcefully. Then even you're not performing well. Your examiner wants to understand the core components of the syllabus, and that's where you've enrolled in my lectures. You, you're getting support of a tutor lecture, core components, A, B, C, D, E, F. You're understanding the block one, block two, block three, block four. Understanding, understanding, you. No rote learnings. And those understanding should also come from the articles, which I am recommending you to read. Plus the lectures, articles and lectures. So are you getting a lot of understanding, all of you? after my course. So I, I, I have no issues on you. I have no issues on you understanding and how they will be tested. Obviously, once you do the past papers and once you uh, watch my lectures, I will be telling you for every topic how it gets to the exam paper, how a question comes on money laundering, how a question comes on business risk, how a question comes on audit risk. So how they will be tested. That's equally part of your understanding of the syllabus once you go over the block one, two, three, four. <clears throat> The next candidates who have practiced plenty of past exam questions, number one, and who have taken time to read around the syllabus. She is not saying read through the syllabus. She is saying read around the syllabus. Books are not recommended. If you go to the BPB book, honestly, BPB book is not, not a read around philosophy. You have seen how dense the BPB book is. You might get lost in it for the next two months. And then you imagine, oh, this is the 18th of August. My exams are just two weeks away. Read around, not through, just a summary, just a quick concept building. My lectures and my articles is giving you that. So what is the need of going into the book? Why have you enrolled in a course if you want to read a BPP book? I hope you're getting this. Why have you enrolled in a course if you want to read a book? So if you have enrolled in a course, then watch the course and skip the books. So read around and who use sensible exam techniques on the day of exams are likely to pass sensible exam techniques. And I've covered those sensible exam techniques in my YouTube videos and I'll be doing separate sessions on that time management, sensible exam technique, linking the answer to the case, ensuring your answer is synchronized to the case. Ensuring your answer is blended to the case. If you're writing generic, you're failing. Sensible exam techniques to me are two. Time management and your answer is linked to the case. Two sensible exam techniques and you pass. Now, I just want to do one analysis here of Lisa Weaver's success formula. She says practice plenty. And I want to also do the analysis on um, the element of SBR now. So is the formula clear to all of you? Understanding the core components. That is the course you've enrolled for. Practice plenty. I'm just giving you a definition of practice plenty in next one minute. Read around the syllabus, no books, only articles and sensible exam techniques. So just let's go back to my Word file now. Can you all see the Word file on your screen? Can you see a Word file in front of your screen, all of you? Okay, great. Now, whatever I write here, I will be sharing this on the portal as a PDF. So don't be worried about it. Now, now listen to me very carefully. Lots of questions will get answered. Number one, let's first look at a success formula, which you all need to follow. The success formula is depending upon understanding of the core components, practice plenty, then read around the syllabus, read around the syllabus and lastly sensible exam techniques four things right what the lisa waiver was recommending us number one understanding number two practice number three read and number fourth exam techniques four things right which will make you pass so let's make them under u p and R and E. So that becomes a mnemonic for us. So success formula is equal to U P R E. Will all of you remember that U P R E? And it should not be that you're spending the next two hours and uh, next two days 
uh, rote learning UPRE. It's about application. It's about implementation of UPRE, which should go in. Let's have a quick word on UPRE and then move on to the SPR. UPRE, number one, understanding, right? In terms of understanding, you have my syllabus. You, you, are, you need to watch my lectures on portal plus read all technical articles. So the moment you watch my lectures and read all the technical articles, you're not just getting the U, you're also getting the R. So U and R comes out of my lectures on the portal uh, and then reading all the technical articles, right? So that is plenty of U and R for you. Now, once you've done with U and R, it's about P, practice, and practice of the recent papers, recent papers and plenty. How would you do it? Now, I prefer that you do the papers from December 2020 onwards after completing the full course, which is post 18th August 2023 for September 23 students and post 18th November for December 2023 students, right? So you will keep those last papers, good papers, uh, the recent papers, uh, once you have completed the entire course. Second, you can do papers before December 20 because once you're going on uh, with my course, in my course, I would be recommending you do this paper, do this paper, do this paper. So obviously you are doing those papers. Some might be very old, some might be 18, some might be 17, some might be 16, some might be 14. Because in my course, I've tried covering the core papers, which have been very, very important in the history of AAA. So I might be recommending doing 14, 15, 16, 12. So you definitely you have to do them. So uh, solve, sorry, do the one recommended by tutor in the course. Do the past papers recommended by the tutor in the course coverage, whichever papers they are, and they are all available past papers for old questions are available on the Google Drive. And you all have the Google Drive, right, for past papers. So you need to do the recent papers. And when I've given you that, you need to do the tutor told papers during the coverage of the course for block one, block two, block three, block four uh, accordingly. And that should be uh, any past papers recommended by the tutor. So do the past papers recommended by the tutor in the course coverage as you move in each block, as you move in each block of lectures from one to four, right? Yes, most of the recent papers, Renal, have been covered in the March 23 webinar, December 20 webinar, and the mock debriefs, right? So uh, if you look at my webinars, December 22, March 23, and June 23, definitely in those webinars, the recent papers have been done. Not all of them, but plenty of recent papers have been done in those webinars. And I will be doing the recent ones in September 23 as well, and December 23. I hope you got the answer, Renal. Okay, next. So... Uh, the recent papers, when you should do the recent papers, is everyone clear on that? After you've completed the whole course and during the coverage of the course, whatever papers are recommended by the tutors, please ensure you do them, right? Is that clear to all of you? So that's practice plenty. And finally, is a sensible exam techniques. S. Sensible exam techniques. I will be doing separate videos on that. The two sensible exam techniques, which is to be followed. No, you need not to watch my old webinars anymore. As a student, you just need to focus on the portal. Everything on the portal has to be followed, not on YouTube. Right? Sensible exam techniques. Number one, time management. I've already had a video on this on my YouTube channel, but I'll be doing an exclusive one for all of you. 
just for my registered students. And the next sensible exam technique is sync the answer with the case study. And I will be doing a separate video on that, even though that is well guided in my lectures you will be taking. So to me, these are two sensible exam techniques which you can use to get success in the double A, triple A paper, sorry. <clears throat> is everyone clear with the success formula? Are you clear with UPRE? Are you clear how to go down with this? Everyone? Okay, now let's come to the SBR knowledge. SBR knowledge, accounting knowledge. Let's see how to go about it. Okay, now first of all, when you are revising your accounting knowledge, let's write a note over here. All accounting standards uh, as part of SBR syllabus are examinable in AAA, number one. Number two, I'll be, I'll be sharing a link for accounting standard revision recommended by ACCA in the WhatsApp group, in the WhatsApp group uh, in the next 24 hours, right? Just wait for it. I'll be sharing a link for the accounting standards revision recommended by ACCA in the WhatsApp group. These are basically the YouTube videos which you can watch to revise a standard. Very short videos, maximum, I think maximum stretch of a video is 10 minutes. The minimum is three to four, depending upon which accounting standard you are revising. So that's one source. Further, if, if a certain accounting standard is not covered in the YouTube videos recommended by ACCA, then you should, uh, revise accounting standards from the last chapter of either AAA, Kaplan or BPP book. Uh, in the BPP book and in the Kaplan book for AAA, there is a chapter, last chapter in both books known as financial reporting revision. So that last chapter is very good. I would not prefer you go to your SPR registers, you go to your SPR books, that's not needed. You need to pick whether the treatment is right or wrong. You just need a surface knowledge. You just need an overview of an accounting standard. You not need the depth of that you do in SPR. So revising the accounting standard from the last chapter for either the AAA Kaplan or BVB book is recommended. Yes, if you have any short notes you prepared uh, while doing SBR, you can use it to revise the standards as well. So these are multiple ways to revise the standards. I'll be sharing a link that is one source. Uh, the last chapter of the book is one source. Or if you have certain short notes we prepared when you were doing SPR, that's one source. So this is how, from where the accounting knowledge will come from. Now, just one last thing, some frequently asked accounting standards. This is this does not mean that you will only do this list. You should complete all standards, but this is a frequently asked one. So at least you can do them at the first priority. You should complete all the standards. Uh, this list is just to give you your first priority. So what should be your first priority for the month of June? So in the month of June, what you should complete, frequently asked ones. So frequently asked ones uh, includes uh, standards, which is um, share based payment. Or I just let's put me the titles. IFRS 2 is very frequently asked. Uh, IFRS 3, uh, primarily the goodwill. Uh, the goodwill is very frequently asked, business combination, uh, intercompany balances or uh, elimination of intercompany balances, uh, goodwill, uh, that is very commonly asked. Uh, investment in uh, associates. Okay, just let me put it like this. Uh, let's first go this way. Investment in <clears throat> associates how 
to account it for. How you account for the investment in associate, number one, uh, the investment in joint venture, how to account for, how to account uh, it for. So how to account for the investment you've done in a joint venture, how to account for an investment in an associate. Um, then you should know something about goodwill <coughs> recognition, goodwill impairment, which comes frequently. Then you should know about uh, inter-company balances, uh, elimination, uh, elimination of... Uh, unrealized profit on inventory in the case of the consolidation of a consolidating accounting elimination okay this is what you should know for consolidation okay the next is uh, share based payment uh, asset held for sale you should know the accounting treatment, uh, the conditions, right? The conditions when you classify, conditions to classify the asset as held to sale, discontinued operations, uh, and you should know how to, uh, how to make a presentation of the discontinued operations. Presentation of the discontinued operations uh, and the disclosures. Okay, share-based payments, you should know the recognition, how to recognize the share-based payment expense, both uh, equity-based and cash-based. Equity-based and cash-based. You should know the accounting entry, right? How you recognize an equity-based uh, and a cash-based, share-based payments. The next, uh, yes, revenue recognition, such an important one. You should know revenue recognition. You should know performance obligation criteria of performance obligation, because in the exam, you need to judge when the revenue should be recorded, which is pretty easy in AAA paper. But revenue recognition, performance obligation, criteria of performance obligation, because you need to match it in the case study, whether that is fulfilled or not. So that's one thing. Uh, leases comes a lot. Uh, leases in terms of knowing the classifications of the lease. Uh, primarily, the leases under 12 months. The lease is under 12 months, uh, how to recognize uh, recognition of the leases. Uh, even, even the sale and lease back, sale and lease back is a very favorite parameter of examiner. Sale and lease back, you should know the treatment of the sale and lease back, which is very popular among the examiner. Uh, that's from the list of, these are more frequently asked, right? This is not an exhaustive list. Okay, then you come back to... Uh, Property, plant, and equipment, useful life. Uh, a lot of questions comes on useful life, estimations of useful life. A lot of a, a question comes around depreciation. Uh, initial recognition, initial uh, recognition of a property, plant, and equipment. Uh, cost. Cost. I'm, yes, these are more frequently ones, uh, right? Because the whole SPR is in AAA, right? The whole SPR was AAA. But I'm trying to give you the priorities, right, Shaksham? Uh, obviously, the, I, I wrote my first statement that uh, the entire SPR syllabus is in AAA for accounting, but these are frequently asked ones where you should be very strong at. Uh, and secondly, uh, yes, block three should be done after revising the standard. So you should ensure that within the month of June or in the next few weeks, you revise your accounting standards first, right? Okay. Next, uh, the, uh, the other one, which is like very popular, yes, is uh, provisions. Uh, ICE 37 uh, is very popular. ICE 37 is very popular. ICE 38 is one of the favorites of the examiner. Uh, ICE 38, ICE 36 impairment is very popular. Uh, at some time, it's very difficult to see a past paper without 36, 37, 38. These are so frequently asked. Impairment is such a favorite parameter of examiner. He loves impairment. Uh, your examiner likes a lot on uh, provisions and contingent liabilities and every such things, asking questions around provisions, contingent 
liability and contingent assets. So you should be very clear on that side. Examiner is very fond of research and development cost, research and development cost. So you should know the criteria of research and development. Examiner is very fond of asking something around intangible assets, the amortizations of the intangible assets. That's one of the favorite areas of your examiner. So 36, 37, 38 comes a lot. Uh, ice 40 uh, investment property has come in the recent past papers a lot. So you should know the investment property, the recognition and classification, the recognition and classification of that. And I think that is it. That's just the frequently asked one on your screen, right? And add just one more to it. Related party transactions, ICE 24. Related party transactions. You should know about the disclosure of related party transactions and the disclosures. Okay, so that makes the list of uh, frequently asked ones. Just let's make it on the next page. So that's the list of 15 on your screen, right? Okay, so will this 15 be done in the next two to three weeks? Will you revise all this up in the next uh, 15, 16 days, all of you? One, one a day, at least one a day. In next 15 days, you're finished it off. Uh, and it should be done before you start the block three. But again, is this an exhaustive list? Is this only the list you're doing, all of you? Is this an exhaustive list? No. You should do all the standards you have in SPR. And every paper you do in block three, you will come across so many accounting treatments, right? So when you come across so many accounting treatments, you will be revising them through my lectures. You will be revising them through my practice and you will be revising them through your own as well. Yes, these 15 at least are mandatory for before block three because at least you can do lots of papers then. If anyone is doing SPR with AAA, then you will be up to date with your accounting knowledge. You should not be revising. Uh, whatever you're practicing in the SPR classes is sufficient. Is that clear to all of you? The frequently asked ones. Is everyone clear how to go down with the revision of the accounting knowledge? I'll be sharing a link recommended by ACCA with you in the WhatsApp group in the next 24 hours. And are you clear with the success formula given by uh, your examiner, UPRE? So I hope you have got the benefits from this orientation session. Uh, I tried covering every possible aspect when to complete the course. Uh, I tried uh, answering the question of how to go in order of the portal, which order to maintain on the portal, so on and so forth. So was it an effective orientation for all of you? Uh, will you greatly or largely benefit from this orientation session, all of you? Any question which you would like to ask now, you have the next 10 minutes as your opportunity. If you think I've missed out something or a question was in your mind which is not answered in the orientation, you are more than welcome to ask it now. Okay. Uh, kindly upload the session on the portal as well. Yes, definitely. The session gets to uh, the portal as soon as possible with my uh, everything I wrote on the Word file and the PowerPoint presentation. So you should not be worried about that. Okay, thank you. Largely benefited. Okay, thank you so much. It was quite an effective orientation. Thank you so much for that. Very useful session. So thank you. Okay, any any technical questions you would like to ask? Uh, yes, the, the mock debrief uh, will be recorded because I don't want the mock debrief to be live because it is to be watched after you've done the mock. Otherwise, if I do the mock debrief live, it will finish off the purpose. Uh, I might do some live classes in, in August uh, as like exam tips, techniques, uh, something like a final revision. Uh, so if anytime I'm doing any live session, I'll keep you updated. But largely, you know, the course is pre-recorded. Yes, you will do well with that, uh, Chiran Chiwi. So just follow the sequence of the course I mentioned you and you will do all well. Okay, I try my best to keep uh, some live classes in between uh, after like 15, 16 days just to interact with you. But again, the course is recorded. 
uh, and you have an access to talk to me on uh, WhatsApp, you can send me a message in the group and I reply to that very effectively. You are connected with me on emails for your assignments and I hope that is quite sufficient because at the end of the day, you, knew, you need to watch the course and you need to ensure that the guidance given to you in the orientation session is going in an effective manner. You, you should do every paper on the practice platform, right? Kelvin. Uh, so even if you're doing a paper which is not available on the practice platform, do it on the blank workspace before you send this to me. So try to do every paper on the practice platform, even if that is not available, do it on the uh, practice platform, on the blank workspace. Uh, Marco, when you when you watch my webinars, in the webinars, I've covered the CBE practice. So how you use the practice platform, if you're unaware of that. So uh, that is part of my webinars and mock debrief. I show, I show on screen the black platform. I practice on the platform. So you can watch my webinars and mock debrief for that. Uh, okay, if you are a repeater, then you can start with the block three. Uh, Sharif, uh, the webinars, uh, already all the changes uh, in the AAA have been covered in my December 22 webinar and March 23 webinar. So that's the reason I'm not currently doing any webinars. I'm only doing the mock debrief. Even for June, I did, I did the mock debrief. And for September, I will be doing the mock debrief. So uh, if there is any new article, I'll do a session on that. If there is any change in the current issue, I'll do a lecture on that uh, and I'll keep them live. Any new article, I'll keep that live. Any new change in uh, current issue, I'll do it live. Uh, webinars will only take place if there is a substantial change in AAA, which is not planned for 2023 anymore. And I will be doing a mock debrief and uploading it on the uh, portal. Is everyone clear? Any further questions? Um, which you would like to ask. Please ensure you practice more on the platform. You submit me answers after writing it on the practice platform and taking a printout and sharing the printout of the practice platform with me, not doing any past paper practice on pen, with pen and paper. Right, so I'll be sharing the links of the SPR accounting standards in the next 24 hours. Just don't be uh, like, uh, drop me a message today, where is the link, where is the link? I will be sharing it and updating you, don't worry about it. Uh, I hope you had an effective session. I wish you all the very best of luck and wish you success in your upcoming exams, whether you're appearing for September or December. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming into the live orientation. Have a nice day ahead and make a time, make a study planner in the next 24 hours. Yes, it is the time for execution, right? So you should sit down and do the execution now for the next 24 hours. Okay, thank you so much. Your tutor, Kashif Kamran, and I'm signing off from the orientation session for September and December exams 2023. Take care, goodbye, and Allah Hafiz.